All right, next thing I want to do is a little bit of a teacher resource for, uh, for um, our parents and also for students, just so you can kind of see some of the fundamentals of some of the mechanics that we're teaching in class. First thing I want to do is uh, basic kicks. When you're throwing your basic kicks, your front, half, your front kick, your roundhouse kick, and your side kick, proper positioning and stuff becomes extremely important. The other thing I want to make sure is that we keep uh, fundamentals clean so that you can add on those fundamentals and you can leverage that into uh, more skill. So first thing we're going to work on is a front kick. We always cut the kicks with four parts to a kick. Chamber, that literally just means to bend your knee and point your knee at your target. Extension, that just means to extend your leg or to reach out. Right? We call means to bring it back and put it away means to put it away. Now we're always trying to reinforce good self-discipline so that when we throw our kicks, we always do all four parts. So it's not about being um, in such a rush that you, you get the kick there regardless of form. Function is going to follow that form, so if you get the form right, your functionality will become better and you, you'll be able to go quicker in a safe way. So I'm going to start from the side of what we call our fighting stance. In a fighting stance, both knees are slightly bent. My uh, weight's going to be loaded to the balls of my feet, particularly on the back leg, so I can push, push off, but also the front leg, so I can pull back and angle. So that sets my weight up. Back hand is always up close, elbow close to the center line of your body and your hand by your cheeks. That gives you coverage on the, the blind side or the back side of the body. Front hand is up in front, and that's going to be for parrying and guarding and stuff. That's not going to be real important during the kicks, except that we don't want to break that form as we go to kick. So as I throw my front kick, part one, I'm going to open my hips just slightly. So that front knee is going to pivot. Uh, stays bent throughout so that my weight stays in my knees rather than being up on straight legs. So my weight's in my knees. I'm going to pivot that foot slightly and point. There's your chain. And then we're going to put it away from there. So when we're first working our kicks, we're really just working on pointing and putting it away. Pointing and putting it away. Right? Then we're going to work the extension and weak well. So it's going to be point out and back, then put it away. Making sure that the uh, start point and end point are preserved. So those are the places we want to pay most attention to. The rest of it will mostly follow if we did the proper start and end point. So if we start one, two, three, four on a front kick, it's a uh, ball of the foot extended, ankle pulled back, foot pushed out. So if I hit before, we'll be with the ball of the foot. Or if I hit a target, it's with the ball of the foot. So I'm just working nice and easy there, keeping those hands up. So again, it's one, two, three, four. And you'll notice as I'm doing two and my leg goes out, my base knee shifts a little bit to so set my weight and to control my weight. Okay, second kick you're going to see uh, for beginners is a roundhouse kick. And it does exactly what you think, it comes around. The chamber grade is going to be different because we want to put the hip in a different orientation. So what we'll typically do to start a round kick is open the gate a little, or start pre-pivot, so that your hips are open. Now a lot of times that'll come right off of a punch. So you'll throw a punch, and in that punch you'll start pivoting to open the hips for the roundhouse kick. But we're going to just start from static for now. And we're going to go to that, that chamber point again. So we're going to open the gate a little, point the knee to the target, we're going to heel all the way back from here, and we're just going to put it away. And what we want is a nice tight foot in that, that, um, uh, that particular kick, because we're kicking on the top of the foot. There are some systems that strike with the ball where you pull the ankle back like you do for a front kick. That's acceptable, it's just not easy for everybody's ankle and uh, foot structure to do. So we use the top of the foot, and of course in sparring class we have boots that protect the top of your foot against uh, bony things like elbows and, and forearms. So again, we're just going to work that chamber. So we pivot, point, and then we're going to put it away. If you're new to this, it might be more uh, comfortable to pivot, point, and step. Right? And then you can just turn around and do the exact same thing in a way. Pivot that front foot, point the knee, and step. And just shift again and you're ready to go again. That way you don't have to worry about recovering the kick yet, because um, that's a little bit more challenging. Working on extension and recoil on that kick, and we're going to go ahead and keep that, uh, that plane of stepping forward. So we're going to pivot, point, out and back, step. And then just pivot and work the same kick the other direction. We're going to pivot, point, out and back, step. But now we'll give you a good thing around kicks. So when we're doing the classes later and the kids are throwing their kicks, what we want to do, or the students are throwing kicks, we want to make sure that roundhouse kick is horizontal. Right? So whether it's low or whether you pick it up higher and hinge higher to get a high kick, doesn't matter. I just want a, a nice horizontal strike. Next thing we're going to work on is chamber and side kick. Easiest way to teach that is off the front leg um, because it requires a lot of hitting if you're at the rear. So when we step up, we're going to turn that front hip open the back hip open, I'm sorry, pointing the heel towards the target. Okay, so we always say that the, target, the heel uh, points the target and the side hip, because that lets me pivot my lead hip. When I do, I'm going to pivot slightly, come up, bring that foot across my body. And you can see that the shin is horizontal, 
and my heel is aimed down. So that becomes my target. Okay, so from here, come up, boom, there's the chamber. And back. And just work in that. So slide up so you got your base. Good. One, and then four. Slide up, one, and then four. And again, slide up, one, and then four. And two and three is going to be shooting straight out. So that, that side kick is going to look like a jab from the arm, right? Except it's going to come off a kick. So we come up here, boom, out and back, and then right back down. So it's straight out and straight back. Again, just like you throw a jab off the front hand. So it's one, I'm sorry, slide up, and then it's one, two, three, and four. So slide, one, two, three, and four. And from that position, you can build all your base kicks. Right, so when we throw a front kick, it's gonna be here, we can slide up, one, two, three, and four. If we throw a crescent kick, you just see an immediate class, it comes up the same, it's just on a slight angle, and it comes inside and outside as the kick goes. Or if we throw a hip kick, um, if we throw a hook kick, it would be set up like a side kick. So we chamber just like a side kick, and then we boom, we pull through to set the hook kick. So you'll see that the fundamentals of uh, knee position for front kick and knee position for side kick become primary for everything else that we do. So those are things we want to preserve in each and every drill. All right, hopefully that'll give you a start on your kicks um, and some basic form. Thanks.